All right, everybody, welcome here. My name is Bruno, and um, I have with me today my buddy Dom. Uh, we have both been on reality TV sh shows before, and we're going to be breaking down Traders Season 2. This is Episode 1 that just aired last night. Uh, I was on a show called Big Brother Canada. I played on Season 3 and again on Season 5. And I have my friend Dominic here. You might recognize him. He's never looked more handsome, in my opinion. Uh, Dominic, tell us who you are, man. Let's get rid of the hat and get rid of the mask, buddy. <laughs> Woo! Well, my name is Dominic. I met Bruno through uh, Melissa. She was a trader. Uh, I was on season one of The Traders. If you don't know me, that's because I got no airtime because obviously you know what happened and uh, I got the boot. Why are you laughing over there? I got the boot. <laughs> this guy got the boot. He got the boot. He got kicked off of uh, season one. He, uh, we ride him. We ride him. Anyway, uh, Dom's a beauty. We love him very much, man. And, um, yeah, we, we, he's always hanging out in the stream and stuff. I do stream uh, six nights a week over on Twitch and Kick. And uh, Dom's a big part of our community. We always have a good time. And uh, he's all about entertaining the people. Right, Dom? Always about entertaining the people. Even though I got suspended for the last two weeks, I did make a comeback last night just for the episode one. Atta boy, and it was good to see you, man. So let's talk about the episode. We're going to be doing recaps all the time. If you guys like what you see, uh, don't forget to hit the follow button, subscribe, all that stuff. It's free. Uh, leave a comment. Tell me what you think of uh, who the traders are, all that stuff, your thoughts on episode one. Uh, and uh, Dom and I will get back to you on all the comments and, and all that fun stuff. So, Dom, first things first, thoughts of the cast. Honestly, uh, seems like uh, from my season to this season, I, I would say I get more of a mature crowd. Okay. Uh, like, you know, I don't know them personally. I don't know a lot of them. I don't follow a lot of reality TV, but just the first sense off of just getting a grasp of them, the way they dress and the way they present themselves, it seems a lot more mature than what we had. Now that could be interpreted many ways, but uh, I get a sense that it might be a little bit more heat this season, to be honest. I think, I think a lot of more of the players are, are there for the game. Maybe, uh, as opposed to maybe playing it a lot more safe like we did. I mean, for the first, you know, at least six, seven episodes for sure. The way this game's designed, like, you know, things happen a lot more in the end than it does at the beginning, you know? So that, that's my take on it for sure. Speaking of, uh, of like, things that happen at the beginning and stuff, you see those, those, those people volunteered. Is that something you would do personally if you were there? You're, you know, uh, you, you play a different – you and I, we play these kind of games very differently. Uh, you're all about, like, honesty and you got to be good to people and, and blah, 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 like that kind of stuff, right? Where I'm more of along the lines of uh, – are you okay over there, Dom? You, you're, you, you focused? You okay? Uh, oh, you know, I, you're doing okay I over there? Well, I got the opportunity. They invited us back for uh, the season two to take part in passing on the baton. And uh, I was actually one of the only ones from season one that went back to uh, take part in it. And you know what? At, at first glimpse of being back there, I feel like production had more uh, money towards uh, the overall experience. Uh, from what you've seen from the episode, uh, bringing in uh, Netta, was it? Netta, they had a model, I believe it was. And then they had the wrestler come in on a helicopter. That was that was big game hunting right off the hop for sure for me. Mm -hmm. Now, did you find it weird that the three of them came in in a helicopter and nobody else? Uh, I mean, just, just looking back from uh, our season to that season, it's pretty apparent that some of these big name people within the reality game world are, uh, you know, taken to a little bit of a higher level. I mean, on season one, they brought in Fierce, Kevin, Eric. No, Eric was with us. They brought Fierce Kevin and Koozie on the boat, uh, which I thought was a little bit more hyped up than us just coming in the regular car, right? So uh, it's something that definitely, I would say, it's part of their, it's part of their thing. Their ambiance of the whole thing, bringing in these, these big game players, let's bring them in in a, in a helicopter and make some, some big shebang, right? So, um, you know, at the end of the day, I, I personally think that like, this is taking it to another level this season for sure. Okay, now, now, like I was asking you there, Dom, um, forget a little sidetrack there. What would you have volunteered to be one of the first five people to to do that? Would you do that? No, no, no. Anybody that anybody in the right mind. I mean, at, at that point in time, when Corinne makes makes the note of, "Hey, listen, we need five people to put themselves up on death row," nobody's gonna step forward. But essentially, as time passes on, somebody's got to do it. And I mean, there guy, was those. Are you gonna do it? You're all about the team. Well, if you watch the way I, I played in season one, I was pretty much in the weeds. I just 
chilled back, relaxed, and watched everything play out. So for me, no. I definitely want to put myself up there. That's a big risk right off the hop. But what if, you it's, really for gonna risk? But if it's for the team? Like you're all about team play, right? You're no, like, no, no I, I'm a team player. I am, but at that point in time, it's so early that you don't know anybody enough to even make a relationship with them to even say, hey, I'm going to jump up there for you, protect me. They don't know you. They don't care about you. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you're risking yourself. You went through the casting process. Uh, you got you got to the manor, and then what? Day one, you're going to go home? It's it's a big risk to take, and I wouldn't take it, that's yeah, for sure. For me, it's it's never an option. You'd never volunteer. That goes for any show. You just There's no reason to put yourself in the line of fire. There's There's no reason at all. There's no benefit. Like... Nobody's sitting there going, oh, you're amazing. Thank you for doing that. I'm going to keep you safe. You've just literally shown that you're, you're willing, like you're going to put other people's games before yours. You're just that easy target now, and, and uh, you're easy to get you know, nominated or whatever, put the heat on. Uh, as soon as you show that, and in my opinion, I, I, I say weakness. People might think, oh, it's, you know, they're strong for, for volunteering. Uh, for me, it just, it, it show, to me, it shows weakness. It shows that, yeah, you're just, you're not thinking smart enough. You're not thinking of the game. You're just, you don't, you're not thinking. You're just like, yeah, I'll do it. You know, thinking you're going to make a friend or two out of it. What I see as a weakness, uh, personally, if I was a player in that season and I, anybody that volunteered, I'm like, yeah, they're, they're, they, they suck. They're duds. They're just, they don't know what they're doing here. They're putting themselves in the line of fire for no reason. Um, not a chance that I'm ever, ever going to do that. So, I mean, I mean, you can look at it two ways. I, I get your point of view, but. You never know what went through the back of those five people's minds. They might have thought to themselves, hey, listen, maybe this is a crazy twist. If I throw myself up there, I'm going to have a good opportunity at becoming a trader because they're going to, you know, take into account the fact that I got balls enough to, you know, put myself on the block. Maybe I got a shot at becoming a trader because if you watch the episode, a lot of those people that were put up on that uh, death row block, they all mentioned one way or another that they wanted to be a trader. So... There's two ways of going about it. Did they make a mistake? I agree 100%. They shouldn't have put themselves up there. But at the same token, were they thinking, you know, is this a little twist considering they've ne never done it before? Do I get a better shot at becoming a trader? So there's two ways of looking at it. We don't know. We don't know what they were thinking. But, yeah, I agree with you 100%. I wouldn't risk it for myself. That's for sure. Risking it for a maybe in my, that, and a narrative you created in your head doesn't, doesn't work for me. You can't just show up and be like, oh, maybe they're going to do this, so I'm going to put myself on the line. Uh, maybe just in case, because in my mind I've created this narrative that I'm going to be a traitor if I nominate myself. Like it makes no sense to me. It's a it's a bad game player. Uh, just at any time you're willing to to put yourself in the line of fire for some narrative you've made up in your mind. Uh, it just it makes no sense to me. It makes zero sense. It never will. I just uh, no chance. Okay. Uh, I mean, I mean yes and no. Like coming from someone that was actually there, like the way that they the production operates the game in itself. There's so many more mind games behind the scenes than there is within the game in itself. Um, so I could see why they would do it. I, and I can also see why it would be tough for yourself to kind of analyze that and then make a decision as to, yeah, it was a decent move or not. So, yeah, I agree with you. But coming from the back end, I could well, see why. Get, get somewhat deeper, what's, what's the mind games in the back end that we, we don't understand? then? Because like you said, well, you were like, there. So let's hear these mind games. Well, like, you know. Uh, I mean, that was obviously day one. I don't know if they slept overnight and, and that was filmed the next day or if that was the day that they arrived there. I don't know personally, uh, but they just do things in the background. Like, for instance, like even for bringing you down to the breakfast. Right. So you're thinking, OK, yeah, I made it to the next episode. Uh, things are looking good. Let's get on with the next day. And then they might like guide you into a room. Unexpectedly. Yeah, but we're talking this is before breakfast This is before any of that stuff. They just showed up to the manor. So. What what background mind games are they playing for anybody in their right mind to be like, yeah, yeah, I'll be uh, nominated? Like, the, where, where's the background mind games in that? I don't see any. I don't. I, that's I mean, what I'm asking just, you. Like, uh, no, I get I get what you're saying. It's it's hard to explain. It's just the way that they operate. Like, you know, with the way that they move you around the house, they make you wait. It's suspenseful. Uh, you've never been there before. It's unexpected. And like I said, they do like small things. I guess yes, it's day one. They might have not. But at the same token, they probably have already gone to confessionals. So, you know, I don't know. It's hard to explain. It's hard to explain. I get your point of view. Yeah, for sure. On day two when there's a murder and whatnot. But there's just subtle things. It's so hard to explain that they do that. Just it's, you know, I don't know if you're allowed to swear or not, but fuck with your mind. You're, you're, you know, swear. Is... Like for me, for me, honestly, after playing that game, it fucked with me so so psychologically that when I came home, I spent the, the additional three weeks at home, and I would wake up in the middle of the night around three in the morning, 
And uh, I got a call coming in. And, uh, you know, I, I honestly thought the traders were coming into the bedroom because we sleep with the door open. And I literally thought there was smoke in the hallway and the traders were coming to get me. And I would stay up all night to make sure that I had my eye on that door to see who the traders would be like. That's that's how psychologically it gets to you, you know, and they have a they have a psychiatrist on site 24 seven for the and the entire show, plus an additional uh, year if you need it. That's, you know, how, how yeah. psychologically it can get to you. Right. So that's uh, very similar to the Big Brother stuff. But but yeah, that, that's, you know, and it's it's a very common thing, you know, from, you know, traders, apparently you're saying, you know, traders, you thought they were coming in the door and stuff. Big Brother players will tell you the same thing, man. They're very messed up after the show. It's a, it's a game of deceit. It's social deception. It's all that stuff. Uh, people are lying to you. People you thought you were your friends, whatever it is. Um, a lot of players are always messed up. And, and again, you know, with the, with the, the, the help for a year after and all that stuff is, is always uh, um, welcome to. So uh, I want to, I have some questions. Let's move on. And then, um, what do you think about the traders? Like, who, what do you think of Netta, Kira, and uh, I don't know the bald guy's name? Uh, what are your thoughts on them being I, traders? Michael. Michael, what are your thoughts on them being I, the traders? I, I, I honestly see them casting. It's a 2.0 version. Uh, in my opinion, just based on the small clips that we got, I see Kira as Melissa B. I see Netta as Kuzi. And I see Michael as Mike. Mike is like a paranormal activist guy that's kind of along the lines of magic. Netta falls in the same realm as Kuzi. She played Big Brother, the big social game in Canada that's now been shelved. And Melissa B, first time coming on reality TV, and the personality's out there. Like, you could tell. Kira's super excited to play. She wants to be deceitful. I mean, it was pretty apparent to me that she was Mel B 2.0 when she was in the car and she was trying to have a chat, this, that. And then he not comes about and he's just like, you're a bad liar. And like, she didn't know what to say. She froze and like, shut up. And like, that was for me, that was like a Mel B 2.0, just overly excited to come and play has a game plan in place, but it's so excited that they're letting the emotions and the excitement get to them. And it could, it, it could ha hinder her down the road, to be honest. I don't know. We'll have to see, but that's, that's, that's my point of view on it. I'm seeing Koozie, Mike, and Melissa B, 2.0. Okay, so here's the thing. And, and I talked – because you were in the stream last night. We did watch the episode together and stuff. The way I look at it, man – and you know this, man. It's an edited show. They have every single episode edited down right now. They know who won. They, everything's done, okay? So they show this conversation in the car where Buddy – I don't know what his name is. Henock, you said? It says to her, oh, yeah, you're a bad liar, yeah. whatever it is. There could have been 40 different conversations. And, and they grab that clip and show you because the editors want you – to think in a certain direction right now you don't know anybody you don't know what's going on right now the editors are playing with your mind telling you what storyline and what you believe and oh they they know she's a bad liar and this and that that guy could have said that to three other people that day four other people could have said it to 10 other people that day but they're going to obviously take that one time they're going to use it they're going to use it in the right context to make you believe oh they think she's a bad liar um I, you can't fall for the editing and you, and you and anybody like you were there you should know the editing and these shows, man, they're going to show what they want. They're not going to show what they want. So, yeah, they say that I think it's just kind of, you know, trying to tell the, the you know, get you on the rails on how they want you to think. I, I personally think Kira is a great pick. I think Kira and, and Netta are very similar. I think uh, they're very similar the way they see things. I think Kira personally is going to be a, a, a problem for Netta. I think she is a very a very good counter like her and Netta I think you're going to see things kind of similar in a way and I think they're going to you know get in each other's way eventually I, I I don't know um I mean I mean just watching back like the episode when we watched it last night another reason why I got the same 2.0 from season one was the fact that Netta's like oh yeah I gotta be excited and you know make it seem like I really care and this and that but like deep down inside I gotta watch what I do because I don't really trust the girl and that was no different than Koozie with Melissa B but that's so an event social game that's that's literally what a, 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 a this is a social deception game if if you can't just be if Netta doesn't like the girl I don't know if she does or not I, I don't know but she can't just be like oh I don't like you that's that's not how these games work Dom it's a social deception game like if you no, don't no, like I the person you got to pretend like they're your best friend you can't just be like I don't like you and it's like hey cool oh, you're going to be voted out next week or whatever it doesn't work that way and also obviously she's going to pretend she likes this girl and that she's excited to see her there and inside she's going fuck man like this is what I got to deal with now you know it's a that's it's a social deception that's how these games are designed that's what they want they want the in your face, they're gonna say one thing, but inside they're just fucking reeling and and, and thinking a total, completely different emotion. 
Um, that's how these games are designed, man. So I think the two of them uh, uh, across from each other, I think that's a good matchup. I think that's going to lead to something down the road. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I just feel like I think they're going to try to work together, but at the same time trying to chip each other apart. Um, what's the guy's name? Mike? Michael, Michael, Michael. I think this guy's in way over his head. I, I think uh, here's the thing. I for those that don't know, I did play Big Brother with Netta um, on season five, Big Brother Canada season five, and I did work with her. And uh, I know I worked with her very well. Netta to me has one of the best minds for Big Brother, and and I'm gonna say this because even before season five, uh, Netta and I we did not get along. I, I didn't. I never talked to her. We never were friends. And, and, and I was going into season five. I figured Ned is for sure a shoe in to be on this cast. I'm going to target her right off the bat. Well, I ended up going in the house with her. We, we become very, very close. And we were like working together. Like we're tight. Um, I know how her mind works. I love it. It's very, it's simple. She keeps things simple. And, and that's how you play these games. That's when you overcomplicate things, it makes it so much harder to just to reel it all in. You keep things simple. You know, you don't have to have the same conversation 400 times. You keep things simple and you can keep everything in check. Um, the way the, the one, the sign for me was when that guy, they, the two girls, it was Netta and Kira, and then they revealed Michael and that laugh. I don't, I think she said something too. I know that. I know that laugh from Netta. And, and for me, it was like, this guy's fucked. Like this guy is done. She's going to cook him. And, uh, I know that Netta, I know that laugh on Netta. So I think this guy I mean, is screwed. I think he's screwed. I mean, I mean, see, it's easier for you because you know some of the personalities, like, you know, so you know how they operate, you know how they work. I never watched uh, her personally to even, you know, give some sort of a type of, you know, opinion towards her. But that's based on what I've seen. That was my first reaction towards what I was seeing. Uh, at the end of the day, I think it might go in. the. Uh, this is a prediction, but I honestly think I might might go further than both of them. I mean, he very well could. That's the thing. This game is, is a crapshoot. At the end of the day, it's a crapshoot. If someone has your name it, in their mouth, you're screwed. It's an anybody but me mentality. That's how these games, you know, it's like, today, let's vote out whoever. And everyone's like, cool, it's not me. Yeah, let's do it. Like, it's an anybody but me mentality. I also feel like the better you are at the game, the earlier you leave. Because if you're a trader, you're just going to keep the shitty players at the end. Why are you going to keep the detectives in the game? Get rid of them. Leave the people that are just completely lost and don't know what the hell they're doing. And keep them to the end because they're, they're clueless. They're lost. You, just, you can confuse them uh, uh, with a slight breeze, you know? So the, the worse you are, the deeper you get. That's how you do it if you're a trader. Why are you going to kill whoever, the worst player? Just keep them around. Let them confuse everybody else. That's what you want. You want the chaos and people to be lost and confused. And, and, and why not? Why are you going to keep the ones that have a good scent and are sniffing out the traders there's no reason to keep them around just kill them and and to me that's one of the big big flaws of the game it's almost like the better you are the worse you do the the worse you are the longer you're going to stay because people are going to trust that you're you're faithful the faithfuls are going to trust because you're you're trying to figure it out but you just suck and the traders see how bad you are they're not going to get rid of you there's no reason to so I, that's that's my take on it but um another thing i want to ask so you were there you were there during the blindfold stage in your season and stuff Give me your thoughts. So you're sitting down at the round table, blindfolds on, Dom. Uh, take them off. What's going through your your mind as soon as the blindfold comes off? Are you looking around? What are you thinking? Are you like, oh, that person's a traitor because of that? What, what's going through your head? Blindfold comes off. First reaction. What's going on? It, from my personal perspective, I wasn't trying to do the sussing and seeing who was thing. I did look around the table, look at everybody. I think I was more concerned with. I got to watch what I'm doing because I don't want anybody to necessarily think that I'm a traitor. I mean, when she was going around, she went around for time. And, you know, everybody, I don't care who it is, everybody wants that tap on the shoulder because, in my opinion, the probability of getting to the end and winning is a lot higher than being a faithful. So for me, yes, there's a lot of people that are, you know, more aggressive and look around the table and try and suss people out. I was more the type that I needed to watch what I did because I didn't necessarily want everybody to put a target on me right off the hop because I didn't want to go home. It was like, we just started. Who yeah. wants to go home and just start, you know? And, you know, some people may, may have went the other route and been aggressive and it cost them, like calling right off the hop. So, you know, I don't know. It's tricky. You can have an opinion towards one way might be better. Some people this way, but there's not really no better way. It's what way works best for you and the way that you want to play. And I was a defensive player. 
I wasn't that's, an that's, aggressive player. That's what I was going to say. Do you think it's better to talk after the blindfold and be like, all right, what's, or just stay quiet, mind your business, and just observe? Because people are looking for a reason. And like as we saw in the episode last night, people are like, oh, Buddy was touching his beard. Oh, this person was like rubbing their eye. Like maybe they just had an itch in their eye. But it's like everyone's just looking for the smallest, the, the smallest reason to be like, that person's a traitor because of this or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Well, so well it, it not just, only that. Not only that, I also do think that a lot of people are finding a reason to push the envelope on somebody else so they can withstand the first episode. 100%. So See, anybody but trying to find that subtle reason, right? So, oh, Michael was touching his beard. Sure, that was maybe their reasoning as to let's push the envelope and get him out because I want to stick around at least one, two, three, four, five episodes. It, I, I found that like a lot of the gameplay from a faithful standpoint was finding ways to deflect the guilt onto somebody else to get your name not on one of those, you know, slips so you don't get voted off or even murdered. I feel like that's another element of the game that makes it so three-dimensional is the fact that, yeah, you're faithful, you want to get a traitor out, you also don't want to be suspect, but you also want to push the envelope onto somebody else. So, like, even if you're in a group of faithfuls and one, even, even though you know that person's a faithful, you don't necessarily work together quite well. You don't see them at the end with you. So you might as well help push them out to keep you along closer to the end. So there's, there's, there's many different levels to it, to be honest. It's not just faithfuls and traitors. No, 100%. The faithfuls go against themselves. The traitors go against themselves. That's why I think Michael has a better shot going to the end because Netta and Kira, eventually, their personalities are going to shine and one's not going to like what the other's doing. And they're going to start to push the envelope as to getting one or the other out to help oh, themselves yeah. out. Eventually, they got to turn on each other. And I think uh, I think this Michael guy is is, is completely in over his head. Um, again, I have no You're idea. Funny. I just, I just feel guy. like the guy, is, he's done. Like, this guy doesn't send a chance. Bro, he's give him in, some credit. Let him be. Dude, let, the goldfish let in a tank free, of sharks, baby. man. He is, he is literally food in, in a tank with Kira and Netta. I, I don't know Kira, but I can tell she's got that fire in her. Actually, I do want to talk about Kira a little bit. Um, I, what do you think of the twist with her brother, man? Tell me your thoughts. I'll give you mine. I want to hear yours first. Um, what are your thoughts with Kira and her brother? Let's hear it. I mean, considering none of the other contestants know that their brother and sister, whether they're step or half or whatever the case may be, I think it's kind of a little bit unfair. Um, the fact that if she does last long enough and some of the other traders fall off, he's definitely going to get recruited. And then at that point in time, because he's a faithful, he's going to build a lot of relationships and hopefully withstand those relationships to the point where they're like, oh, yeah, that guy's 100 percent faithful. Then when he gets transferred over, they're going to have a an even better probability to winning the whole thing, especially if Ned is gone. If Ned is gone, she's going to be able to control that conclave. And if she brings her brother in and it's closer to the end, it's going to be dangerous. They might have a good chance to win. But her personality being the way it is, very bubbly, outgoing, this and that, I could see her getting caught in a line being gone. So and Ned being the one to push the envelope on that one. Here, here's my take on it. I think she has the absolute biggest advantage in this game. It's not even close. It's, it's, it's her game to lose right now. Think about this, man. She has her brother in, in, in the game, okay? They both know they're going on the show. So the fact that one's a traitor and one's a faithful is, is ridiculous to me. Absolutely ridiculous. They can have secret codes, secret words to even – can, she can tell him who the other traders are with secret codes that nobody else knows, production won't pick up on, nothing. They can, she can literally be at home. They could have made up some plan. If I'm a trader or you're a trader, do this if this person is. Or if we're in a room with this person, tap your pinky finger on something, whatever it is. It does, it, it, this is just whatever. Okay, It could be anything. There could be codes to let the brother know who the other traders are, and then they can work from there. Then they can start having an open conversation. Oh, what do you think of Netta or whatever? Uh, pushing it one way or another, basically being like, should we keep? We should keep Netta safe. I like Netta, but she already gave the code saying that she's a traitor, so that Netta's a traitor or something. Whatever, you know. These are just things I'm I'm just making up on the spot, but it, it, it's very unfair, very very unfair. The fact that she has her brother in there, they both obviously want to see each other do well. They're family, okay. 
Um, they're both on there. One's a traitor, one's a faithful. That is ridiculous to me. That gives the answers to both sides. The faithful is going to know who the traitors are. If she gives them the little codes and stuff, um, and the traitors are going to obviously know who the traitors are and stuff. I, I think it's ridiculous. I think that twist was just, it missed the mark. I think it just was unnecessary. Um, the way I always look at these shows, if you cast right, if you cast properly, the show will take care of itself. The entertainment will be there. The players will be there. If you start throwing in things like this that interfere, that is a massive, massive, massive advantage for, for Kira. Huge. And, and the brother, too. Like you say, if they can survive long enough, and she knows if the traders start going, they have to recruit. If the other trader doesn't know that that's her brother, okay, she can get rid of Netta or Michael at any time and convince the other person, hey, listen, man, her brother, who they don't know is her brother, would be a good fit to come in. Well, do you think the brother's going to turn on the sister with the other traitor? Or do you think now the brother and sister are going to have the power as the traitors to vote out whoever they want? They're going to be able to vote out that other traitor anytime they want. They can basically control the votes on who to kill every night. I think it's a massive advantage. I think it missed the mark. I think it was unnecessary. Uh, and I don't like it. I never like those kind of twists. Just let the players play. Put in people that don't know each other and just have fun with it. Uh, that's my take on it. I just think it's, it's reason, ridiculous. The only reason why I could see them allowing that is maybe they don't live in the same household, so they had no clue that this was happening. But if they live in the same household, 100% I agree with you. That's bull, and uh, that's unfair to everybody else, 100%. I'm so sure that, that we don't know. Do they live in the same house? Sure, even if they don't, I'm sure they Canada? know. I'm sure they maybe. knew they were going on the show. Come on. Um, here's the thing. Now, I have another question. Uh, do you think, if you're like a good competitor, say like you're an athlete and you're in there and, and you're winning all these comps and you're winning money for the pot, is that a reason to save someone in there? You're like, hey, listen, man, this guy's making me 20 grand a day. Why, let, why get rid of this guy or this girl or whatever? Like, this person's nah. making his bank. Like, do we keep them in? Nah. Let, them, let them raise the pot? Or do they just get rid of them? Who cares? Nah, that, that does nothing. I, I mean, in my opinion, the whole pot building thing is just, an element to the show to fill some time. Uh, I don't think it does. It has absolutely anything to do with that guy's a beast. Let's keep him around because you don't even know the competitions you're going to be doing moving forward. They could be uh, more theory thought out instead of physical. Uh, so, I mean, no, in my opinion, I don't think um, it has absolutely anything to do with anything. I, I, I think more that. or less either he connects with a lot of the faithfuls mm -hmm. and, or he's tight with some of the traders and that's how he sticks around. If he runs his mouth too much, I don't care if he brings in $100,000. He's gone. Okay, now that's some other question. You say if he runs his mouth too much, why would you get – why not keep – if you're a trader, okay, would you want to keep someone like that in the house that's just causing chaos, throwing grenades in, confusing the other faithfuls, or do you get rid of them just because, ah, they're running their mouth, let's get them out of here? It depends which way they're running their mouth. Are they running their mouth in their direction, or are they running their mouth just like an idiot? That's all – that's, that's going to be something that they got to judge. Like. I mean, if I was a, a trader and he's running his mouth and it's got something to do with me, sure, he's gone. But if it's with regards to the faithfuls, then, yeah, keep him around because he's just going to suss himself out with the other faithfuls. And when it comes to the round table, he's going to be voted out before you know it. So it all depends on, on circumstantial. So we don't know that. We could say he said, she said. But in my opinion, if it's towards the traders, yeah, he's gone. Okay. But that being said, it also does protect them, too, because – if the traitors are in his mouth and he's running his mouth, and then before you know it, he's murdered, then it makes it suspect on that person. So the traitors actually got to be careful too. So it's a fine line. It's a fine line. So my question to you, what's the right way to play? How do you play, how do you play traitors, man? I think whether you're a faithful or a traitor, you honestly listen more than you talk. Mike said it at the end of the season. Uh, I think it was on some of his PR stuff that he did for CTV, but or maybe it was closer to the end, but listening more than talking is the best route to the end of the game. Now, because is that no one easier has that... said as a trader, or does that go for both? It goes for both. Now, how would you play? Both. Tell us how you played the game and, and how you see the game that should be played. What's your thoughts on how you would play or you did play, and was it right or wrong? How do you play the game? What's the best route for you? Okay, so I never did any social deception games. I'm a social guy, but I've never done them. Um, I did spend time watching the U.S. season to kind of get a grasp as to, like, what's this all about? Never heard about it. And for me, I honestly thought the best way to go about it was build actual relationships with people 
where they they had a feeling deep down inside that they could trust me and that they would keep me around. And also in which they thought, okay, yeah, there's no way this guy's a traitor. He he doesn't really do anything. He's always in the corner smoking. He minds his own business. He doesn't get involved with many of the like deep conversations towards who's a, a traitor or who's suspect. So, I mean, there's no way in hell he's a traitor. And I, I do feel like the way that I played portrayed 100%, I was a, a, a faithful until Kevin, Mr. Kevin, <laughs> Kevin got me going emotionally. And I said to myself before I was going to go on there, not let my emotions get to me. And that was the only downfall. I honestly think if I continue to stick to my guns and not start getting amped up, because as, as the season went on, and I played the subtle game and people started getting eliminated. I then said, okay, let's turn it up a notch now. Like, let's start playing the game now. There's less people. Connections have been formed. There's people in here that trust me. I can trust them. And now let's play the game. And you know what? I went from zero to 100 real quick. And guess what? I was 100% out the door before you knew it. So that was my biggest mistake. If I stuck to my guns, I might have had a better chance going to the end. I honestly think the best gameplay is build relationships. Don't talk too much. Don't put out information that's going to come back to haunt you. And just honestly, stay nice and quiet like some of these people are doing on episode one. It's not It's not necessarily the best entertaining gameplay, yeah, but for them shit. to get to the end. Who cares? Like that's. I, I know it's like an answer that viewers don't want to hear, but who cares, man? You know, if you win the show and you cash in whatever it is, 100 grand, 200 grand, whatever it is. No, no. It depends on who you are. If you're faithful and you split it with three people, you're only getting 30 grand. doesn't matter. Whatever the prize is, okay? Who cares if they think you're entertaining, entertaining or not? Who cares, man? At I know, the day, I know. You're that's putting why the check in your bank account. They I aren't. know. That's why so, you said I was a dud. Yes. I because did. I didn't give you any gameplay, so you're a hypocrite, bud. No, no, no. You, no, no, no. What I'm saying is, you don't. Who cares if you're? A t- I don't. I I prefer a good gameplay. But when I'm a viewer, when I'm a viewer like that, yeah, absolutely, man. But as a player, I don't give a crap, man. If people like my game or not, I don't care, man. You're there to put a check in your bank account, and you know what? It, it, you're gonna sleep nicer at night. And if someone has a problem with it, they're not, and that's their own problem. That's their problem. That's a them problem, not a you problem. If they don't like how you win, too bad. You know what I mean? Go do it. Go get on the show and do it yourself. You know. So, so I you're just telling me that I had a chance. No, God, no. You, you definitely not. No, God, no. But what do you mean? You just said you don't mind that gameplay if you're going. No, there you could have got chat. far, but I don't think you. I don't know if you would have won. But you've got it right. Did you know it was Mike? Uh well, at the time that I got out, I knew it was Koozie. Okay. But I didn't know it was Mike. No, because Mike, like Mike, was part of my like you know Italian vibes. You know, Kumbari Cheech, just the WAP <laughs> crew, me, Rick, and Mike. I didn't find out that Mike was Italian until a little bit later on. Um, he didn't have some of no, not till later on. No, some of his features, you know, within the face, the hair, yeah, yeah. didn't give me the Italian vibes until you know he brought it forward. And I said, We need to stick together. The Italians always stick together, it's part of the heritage. He even said, He's like, Listen, man, he's like, Honestly, if you didn't get eliminated, he's like, I was bringing you to the end, whether I was killing you at the end well, or not. Dude, what do you think that tells you? He, that he thought I was a chip player. There you go, there you have it. But I, the, but funny, that's his interpretation, bud. Do you want a funny story? When I was HOH on, on my first season, you know who I got out? An Italian. That's just the way it is, man. Oh, that's heartbreaking. Buddy, that's how you, hey, man, it's a game, buddy. It's a game. This when, isn't when, real what, life. It's a game. Buddy. When uh, when Rick went home, oh, I was devastated. And Fierce came up trying to, like, console me and this see, and but, that. And Fierce knew I was pissed. But that's how we see this game differently. You look at it like this is real life. It's a, it's a, someone wins. One person wins. It's a game. You know, like just because someone's Italian, you think I'm going to keep them in the game if, if it's not going to work for me? I don't give a shit. You go home. Well, you know, I, I, just, I just see it in a way in which, like, you know, there's a lot of similar morals, values, the upbringing. Sure. So, so there's a lot to connect with, and it's easier to stick together because you see things a lot the same, right? Now, Rick came out guns blazing. He wanted to play the game. He didn't care if he wins. He didn't care what the next chapter of his life was going to entail. He was there to play the game. I told him many times, listen, keep it quiet, calm it down. He didn't want to. So, I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, it might have not worked anyway because he was there to play and I was more to get to the end and try and win money to get that ring for Rita. So, it is what it is. Yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough one. But that's what I mean. Like, if you're there to win the show, you got to take these, these outside, oh, he's Italian, we got to say whatever. Whatever the thing is. 
And you got to look at everyone individually, man. I don't give a shit if, if what's there in front of me. It's like, hey, listen, this is my path to the end. Um, if you are if you fit in the path with me, let's go together. If you don't, I'm sorry. You got to go just like everybody else. At the end of the day, I mean, if you're a faithful, obviously there could be more than one winner. Um, but if you're a trader, I mean, you know, it is what it is. So, but I, I don't know. I look at it. I, we definitely look at the game very, very different. I know we've had conversations, you know, in the past. And we, we see it very different. Oh. You're more like, oh, it's, you know, karma and you're – uh, morals like the, you play with like oh yeah, i want to be like the far left and i'm the far right or you're the far right you, and i'm the far left There's you no see it here. like i want to be seen as a good guy like i don't give a shit what they if they think if they like me or not like the audience to me at while i'm playing is irrelevant to me like the only people that matter is the other players i don't give a shit about the producers i don't give a shit about the viewers at home i don't give a shit about the cameramen behind the cameras i don't give a shit about anybody else it's if there's 10 contestants that's all that matters to me when i get out i get out and we'll see whatever the fuck happens but you were looking at it like i want everyone to see just how good of a guy i am like nobody today is saying remember dom he's he's a good guy it's too bad he lost like they don't care they want to see the fucking the game like they're not looking like dom is a great guy you know like that's well that's 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 how i was trying to portray more or less than listen you know if i'm that good of a guy there's no way i'm a traitor like i don't know it was my way of indirectly trying to like build relationships and form a narrative in their mind that you know this guy's got to be a faithful there's no way which would protect me to the end right so i don't know that's the way i went about it like i said it was my first time doing a reality yeah. deception thing i'm a huge gamer uh when it comes to actually games and competitive stuff even like playing family games at home and whatnot i did approach it a little bit differently but i thought that was the best way to go about it to get towards the end and and you know split the pot so you know, I get what you're saying, 100. percent You if are I had at the end. Offer- no, you're at the end with your buddies, and you know you can get rid of one of them. So the prize is say 100,000. Say there's three of your buddies and a trader, and you're gonna split what 33 grand, whatever it is. But you know, okay, I can go one more round, cut out that one person. Maybe I can make you know 50 grand now instead of 33. Do you do it, or you say no, we're splitting it? 33? No. Yeah, I split it. 100. percent I split it. I even said that to the people at home. Listen, I'm here for a nominal amount of money. I'm not here to win it all, and I want to share it with the faithful. So, yeah, I was that solid, bro. I was that solid. I would have not got somebody out at that point in time knowing that they stuck it out the 10 days, went through all the same shit that I went through to then kick them out at the end. No way. I don't care about the extra 17 yeah. grand. It's not going to change my life. It ain't going to make me rich. I'm rather rather make that person just as happy as I'm going to be at the end. So, no. See, that's what I, I, I respect that about you because you, you're – that's how you are in the real world, and that's and you carried that into the game. And I, and in the real world, I'm very very similar. But I always say this: when I go into these games, you got to turn that off. Like I, no, I'm not saying you. Everyone can play differently. I'm not trying to say you have to play like me. I, I, this is not what I'm trying to get at. This is how I play. Like when I when I do it. When I'm in the real world, I would never stab my friend in the back. It's just not how I work. But when I go in these games or whatever, I, I don't care. Like I, everyone's a target. Everyone's got to go, but me. That's the way it looks. Like that's how I see it. Um, but in the real world, I would that's- not do that. So that's, that's, that's also, where I can turn it on and off. You know? But that's also your mentality because you came from two seasons of doing this type of game. That was the first time that I put myself mm-hmm. in that position. So now, moving forward, obviously I'm not going to get any other, other opportunities. But if I did, then I would go in the same way you did. Mm-hmm. Fuck them. So now so, you change your mindset to like, yeah, I'm just, it's, that's it. Yeah, now, now I've experienced it and seen how it is. To be able to say, yeah, it's just a game at the end of this, even if I backstab somebody or even if the viewers at home see me backstabbing somebody, it's not going to reflect on my personal life. So that's that's kind of where I was on this season. Obviously, it's not going to happen again, but now I know it's it literally is just a game and people aren't going to essentially judge you on the outside world based on what you did in there. I went in there honestly thinking I can't be that type of guy and portray myself like that on TV uh, and then come home and then everybody thinks I'm this fucking devious, manipulative person when I'm not. So, yeah, I didn't go into it thinking this is just the game. I went into it thinking this is more than a game. Oh, I get it. And a lot of people make that mistake. A lot of people do. And they always say the same thing. If I go back, like I've taught, you know, many of the Big Brother Canada players and Big Brother US players and, and they're always like, man, if I, you know, now that I've I've gone through there and, and out, I realize like, man, why why did I do that? Like, you know, I'm trying to, they're trying to portray something or try to impress, you know, people that don't give a shit 
about them yeah. at the end of the day. Like they don't give a shit. So you're these people go in and they try to impress these people and they come out and they have nothing. And these people that they were trying to impress don't give a shit about them anyway. So it's like then they're like, fuck, I need a second shot. But it doesn't come because they did that the first time. And, it, and it's a it's a learning lesson. A lot of people have to have to take, uh, unfortunately, yeah. you know. So and you know what? Hey, listen, I, I, I can only be grateful uh, I think for sure the first uh, show that I was put on was more in my element. You know, it was uh, reflective of renovations, being funny, things of those natures. Uh, when I got into this show, like I said, it's a different ball game. I, it takes learning, um, and now I know it's a game. So, so, why do, so that leads to my next question. Why do you think? And I'm very glad they did cast you because you're just you know everything aside, like like. You are a great guy. I actually really have a lot of respect for you, and I do like you. We get along very, very well. Uh, but why would they go for someone on a renovation show to be in a social deception show? Why would they go for farming for love, for a for a deception show? Why are they going to the Bachelor? Why were they? Why are they going to these like random shows that have no, like? Why not just cast new people, like just like people that nobody knows across the board? I think I think in I think because it's such a new show. And it might not be the biggest show to the market in Canada. I think they utilize some of the personas from other shows to get their audience from their initial show to drag into this show to help build more of a, you know, publicity towards the show, to be honest. Because now if you look at season two, it seems like there's a lot more interactions online. And that was all drawn in from season one, which season one obviously developed some of that clientele. You know, to then have these more people that are known in the public eye to even get it bigger and bigger to continue on for the longevity, not for the short haul. No, I, I, you understand, know? I understand that. But let's just be honest here. Someone watching Farming for Love, do they really give a shit about traders? Someone watching a reno show that wants to watch people build a kitchen, do you think they give a shit about these random strangers killing and lying to each other like it's a different well, maybe, it's a different atmosphere yeah right? but maybe maybe it's essentially the way it was, they were portrayed on the season like for instance for me the personas and the personalities coming together and all clashing to you know make something bigger than what it essentially would be at least you know what the guarantees are because these people have already been on these shows you know what they can give you sure I you know it, what i mean I but like for if me, it's like Big Brother new, Survivor, they they come from a similar, and I'm not saying they're like great or anything. I'm just saying it's a similar game where it is social deception. People get voted out. You got to backstab. You're not backstabbing someone fixing a sink. Like you're just not doing that. You're you're trying to fix a sink or whatever. You know, fix a bathroom. You know. So I I just I get it. I get it. But at the same time, it just it just doesn't make sense to me at all. But like you said, you know, you were on these shows, but you had no idea what the social deception part of it was like. So you're you learned after the fact. You're like shit, man. This is not what I thought it was gonna be. So again, personally, I now nothing against you. I you know I love you, man. But like, I would rather see either a bunch of new people come in that are there to play a social deception game. They know what they're getting into rather than casting someone that literally doesn't know what the hell they're getting into. Like, oh, this is not what I thought. I didn't know that you had to do this. I always had to be friends, you know? Like, I don't, I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, for me, it would be like the guarantee. Like, anybody can send a submission tape for two minutes. Do you really get to know their personality, Absolutely. how they interact in certain situations, mm. how they're going to be able to cope, uh, being on TV and seeing themselves, it's it's a little bit more risky than it is with people who've done it before because they know they're going to see themselves on TV. They can handle the backlash that might come through social media and whatnot because that that's a big part too, right? They always ask you like, oh, are you able to handle if you know you're not seen seen in the limelight in a positive way? Like, is it going to affect your life? Like, you don't know these new people, if they're going to be able to cope with all that, at least with the people who've been on shows before, you know, okay, you're guaranteed to not have to worry about them. No, I get that. I get it. I get it. All right. Right. So let's so. Talk about thoughts on the cast. Let's, uh, we'll wrap it up a little bit. Thoughts on the cast overall, the episode, the cast, uh, let's start with the episode first. What are your thoughts on the episode as a whole? Did you like it? Was it not enough? What, what do you think? I thought it was too fast paced. Uh, from the time that they did the death row, that kind of got thrown into the background to then all of a sudden you're at the round table and I, they should have dragged it a little bit more. But then again, there's only 10 episodes. There's 22 contestants. Everything's got to happen quite quickly. So I understand it. But I felt like it was it wasn't detailed enough. It was quite quickly. Everything was vague and quick, vague and quick. 
Um, overall, like we were talking about last night, the reason why I thought there'd be four traders is because there was more contestants this time. And there's obviously 10 episodes with more people. More people got to go home quicker. And that's probably essentially why they did the death row off the hop. Um, but overall, yeah, great episode. Um, the entertainment factor, I think, was a lot more hype. Like with the way that they did the introduction and, and the overall production, I thought was a lot, you know, yeah. was a lot more higher than it was on season one for sure. I liked, uh, I, I like, I just, again, the, the, to me, the competitions are completely useless. Like they could, they got to figure something out, man. The, the competitions are completely useless. I don't know anybody that likes them. People always that, that recorded just fast forward through them anyway. It means nothing to the viewers. Uh, my biggest, my biggest thing with the comp, like, here's the thing. If you're on the show getting an extra 10 grand, 20 grand out of the pot, it's amazing to you. It's it. You love this. You're a player. You're like, yes, 20 grand as a viewer. I don't give a shit. I don't care. I don't care if you walk out with a hundred grand. I don't care if you walk out with five grand. I don't care if you walk out with $10 million. That means nothing to me. I don't care. Um, and, and I think that's where the competitions that there's, there's a disconnect because the competitions other than the shields that come in randomly, there's no reason for me to, to care if they succeed or not. Oh, yeah, cool. They just made five extra grand. Like, I don't care. And it just takes up so much of the episode. I think they really got to fix that. They got to either add I, – I don't know. Because you know, they, they got to add either clues. I don't know, man, or, or shields or something. I don't know. But it just – it doesn't hit. And it, and it never has. Every season I've watched, it just the, – the, the competitions is just the fast-forward mark. That's where we have fast-forward. When it's done, you move on. They just they're, – they're, point, they're clueless. They're pointless to the viewer. Um, other than I that, think I think the episode's great. I wish there was at least, you know, obviously a murder or a, a vote. Or, the round table is the best part of the whole show, in my opinion. Uh, I thought it was a good episode. Uh, I'm just looking forward to the next one where we finally get a round table and, and, and shit starts moving a little bit. I think – I think, though, from a contestant standpoint, the games, yes, they're designed to build the pot. That's part of the whole, you know, thing. But uh, I think it's a way of, of utilizing or developing clues towards capturing who potentially is a traitor as well. Because there's that? times where, like, we did, we did contests and, like, people would think, oh, you, you threw the challenge. We had a chance to win. You just don't want anybody on our team to get the shield because that's who you want to murder tonight. So from a contestant standpoint, uh, it does aid in helping towards, you know, getting some type of clue towards who the traitors may be because everything else is he said, she said. So I think oh, it's beneficial see. for the contestants. But yes, for the viewers at home, it's not really the entertainment factor that you're looking for. You want to see the yelling, the screaming. The, the blaming game, you want to see all that stuff, right? No, well, so I, wanna, I can in a competition, I want to see, like, if you win, like, okay, I'll just see, I know it's not Big Brother, I know it's not Survivor, but it's like, if you win the competition, you either get an advantage, you get immunity, like, there's something, there's a reason why you want to watch the competition to see who wins it. There's, there's something as a viewer, you're like, oh, sweet, this person's safe, they can't get voted out. The worst part about even in Traders is, even if you do well in the competition, even if you have a shield, you can still get voted out. It makes no sense to me. Like, the shield should protect you from votes, murder, everything. You should be completely immune. And I feel like that's where they missed the mark. So even if you do well in a comp and you have a shield, they can still just vote you out anyway. It makes no sense to me. So there's, yeah, no, yeah. there's no reason for these competitions to have any value at all because it doesn't even matter if you do well in it. It doesn't matter. You can still get voted out the next day or the same night. It makes no sense to me. And and that's where it misses the mark. They got they have to tweak it just enough. Something I don't know what the answer is. I'm not gonna pretend like I do. But they need to either make it where if you get a shield, you can't get voted out, or or um uh, uh killed. That makes people want to do well in these competitions, and it gives a viewer a reason to watch it to be like, yes, this person I need him to win or sh or her to win, so they can't get voted out. And and I think to me that yeah, yeah, that yeah. says a lot more. You know, well, if, if you want to if you want to submit your complaints, then you got to submit submit it to the format holders, which are in the UK. Canada just abides by the rules, right? So they can't just change whatever they want. Well, they should be able to, man. They should, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, so that's uh, and what are your thoughts on the cast? Last last question. What are your thoughts on the cast overall? Uh, who is your who do you think is going to do really well, and who do you think is just out of their league right now? I what think do you see? Uh, we don't see much. But... I, I, well, I think just based on the uh, the camera footage, they, they showed a lot of airtime for Cedric. I think he might be putting himself in hot water. Yeah. He's, he's, yeah. It seems like he's there to play, 
but it seems like he's talking too much. So he might be gone before you know it. Mm-hmm. Who's going to stick around the most? Probably one of those women that aren't talking too much. I don't know their names off the top of my head, uh, but they seem like they're not out there and abrupt with their personalities. So they might stick around longer. Uh, and I do also think there's going to be a lot more feuds this time around, a lot quicker with traders than than before. Especially if you got Kira and Netta, and the way that Netta went about it, to be honest, it seems like you know she's going to work with her, but she's not going to work with her. Eventually, something's going to happen, and someone's going to be out the door. Yeah, I, I think uh, I hope it's a good season. I, I I think it has a good potential. The cast seems pretty strong from what we see. Again, we don't see anything. We don't really know much. Uh, yeah, Cedric talks too much. I think the other Michael, the other third trader there, that guy is in over his head. Akira and Ned are just going to eat this guy for lunch. Um, I think um, I, I I don't like the brother sister twist. I hope I I don't know. I just I don't like it at all. Uh, Netta is Netta, and and I've played with her, uh, and uh, and I know how she she thinks. I think she's I think she's good. I think I, I don't know what happens. I have no idea, but uh, I think she uh, I think she has the right mentality for it, the right um, just everything, the mannerisms. I think I think she she does well in something like this. Um, yeah, I don't know. Nobody really stands out. I think yeah, like you said, Cedric talks too much. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's one episode. Yeah. We don't see enough of anything, but uh, there's a few it's people I think that can do really well. Uh, and there's a few people I think that are just there just to to fill in some bodies. But that's about that's about it. But. Is uh, is Netta's personality well liked? Like that she like a lot of people tend to gravitate to her or no? I would think so. I I would say yeah. It depends. There's she's one of those people you like her or you don't. You know, and and uh, and that, that's just the way it is. And I'll there was right somebody. Now, I originally did meet Netta and I did not get along at all after season three. So she was on season two of Big Brother Canada. I was on season three. We never talked. We were never friends. We never hung out. We never messaged each other. Like nothing. We didn't like. We had zero contact until season five. And someone disrespected her on episode one already. I can't remember who that was. What's someone disrespected her? No, someone suspected oh, her. Suspected. I I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Somebody did. They made a comment. So let's see how far that gets too. We're going to have to, mm-hmm. you know, watch and see what happens on, in the near future. Obviously there's not too much content to go off right yeah, now. Just because is... They're all in new, new in the house. Right. Yep. And then the challenge, same thing. It was, you had to go get cannonballs. I mean, it, you were guaranteed to get the money to be honest. It wasn't of course. that crazy, but you've seen some of the, the clips at the beginning of some of the challenges they're going to be doing. And there was one where they were up in the air. That seemed like that was pretty difficult. That might be closer to the end. We'll have to wait and see, buds. We'll have to wait and see. Dom, I want to say thank you so much for doing this. Um, I'll definitely put all your, your Instagram and stuff down below. We'll get you, you know, we'll get you out there. Uh, Any final things you want to say? Final takes, Dom, what's your final thought on, on everything right now? Give it. Oh, oh, here comes the mask. Zio Pat. Tell Zio Pat I say hi, by the way. Oh, here we go. What, what's going on, Adam? That's we need. We needed a twist. I needed to be back out there, baby. It's time for revenge. You, you want to go play again? Let me give you a little kiss over there. Okay, give me a little bajet. There Thank you, you go. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Dom, thanks again. We're going to be doing this again after the next episode. Maybe we can get uh, – we'll get some other players on. I know there's some that say they want to come on here too, so we'll, we'll get some chatting going. Yeah, Melissa, she'd love to. Okay, well, there you go. Melissa, we're going to get Melissa on the next one. How about that? She that, way we can get, that way we can just burn her bum with the 2.0 Kira. Okay. She, already, she already messaged me saying she was mad about that. <laughs> she didn't like the, the Kira 2.0, Melissa 2.0? Yeah, she, she posted it on her story, yeah. Okay, well, there you go. There you go. All right, we'll get her on here. All right, uh, Dom, thanks again, buddy. And uh, everybody else, make sure you hit the like button, leave a comment, tell us your thoughts on the on the episode, on the cast, everything, and uh, we'll get back to you on it. All right, there you go. Look at that, Dom Traders Canada, the guy. He's the guy. He's the the goat. The goat. Stay himself. in line, people. Don't get the boot. It's the worst thing you can ever do. Believe me when I tell you. Yeah, yeah. D- stay in line. Coming from experience. Don't get kicked off. Dom, why'd you get kicked off? <laughs>